what we normally, normally do is we plot the two curves together. So we get a, a curve like that. The blue line, if it's an expiration point, this is what I would expect to find if it's discovered, okay, which is useful because if I'm going to value this potential success, I need to know what's in the ground when I find it. You don't find what's called a risk barrel. So I either find nothing or I find the field. I don't find something between the two, okay? So I need to work out, well, if I found it, this is what it could be, it could be worth. And then here's my reserves or potential, these are my resources still. But these could become reserves when due to course of time. And I've extracted my confidence levels, which are now read off this curve, so I didn't have to actually guess at them. The P90 is 49 million barrels, the P50 is 89, the P10 is 164. Okay? When we're dealing with prospective resources, we, we still call them either by the confidence levels or as low, best, and high estimates. And I've just quoted the mean. Um, I'll come back to that because the mean, which is the, the weighted average of all the values, that's a useful number. For those mathematicians in the room will know exactly what I mean, but uh, perhaps it'll um, be all this in a moment. And we also show the red line. The red line's the risk view when you incorporate the chance of success. And the only reason to put that there is so it immediately tells me that this is a one in 10 chance of success. So there's my reported numbers. That's what I would report. But I wouldn't report that without telling you what the chance of that occurring was, okay? That would be the, the risk numbers, okay? A lot of people say, well, just a minute. You can see that the means, the, the means are, can be manipulated arithmetically. That's about the only number in a probability sense that can be, you, you can use normal arithmetic rules on. Okay, that's the danger of using probability just means you can't manipulate confidence levels. Okay, so a lot of people will look at this and you know, I'm talking about oil and gas people fall into this trap immediately. They'll say, well, I can see that the unrisk mean was 100. So the risk mean must be 10% times that, that's 10, that's, that's simple maths. Why isn't the risk P94.9 or the, the risk P58.9 and the risk 10 16.4? Well, how could it be? How can you have 9% confidence of 4.9 million barrels when 9% of the time is dry, zero? So you, you, so you, you can't have a risk P90 of, of anything other than zero. Someone said to me, well then what's happened to my numbers? You just lost all my numbers. I said, no, I haven't. They're all in there. They're just beyond the P10 on the risk curve. They're in that red line, but they're, um, the probability is slow. So that, that unrisk P50 of 89 actually becomes the risk P5. There's only a 5% chance of having 89 million barrels because I've got to take into account the 90% chance of, of finding absolutely nothing at all. Okay, so the numbers are there. A lot of, a lot, a lot of people, industry people, you know, don't understand this. And this is the most basic chart. Okay, this is not complex yet. This is simple probability theory, which all companies use, but 90% of companies simply don't understand what they're doing.